Now the number 10 is really important. So let's look at the power of 10 with multiplying and dividing. If we imagine the digit 3, we know our place value. So if we put it there, it's worth 3 units or 3. But if we put it there, and we have a 0 in the units place, remember we do need the 0 there, it's actually worth 3 tens or 30. Ah, so let's start with that 3 again. If we put it there, it's 33 times 10 equals 30. So moving it one place to the left is like multiplying by 10. 30 times 10 equals 300. 300 times 10 equals 3000. So when you multiply by 10, your digit moves to the left one place. What about dividing? Well, guess what? Division's like the opposite of multiplication. So let's start with 3000 and divide by 10. And you can see the digit 3 moves one place to the right to the hundreds place. The zeros also move to the right, but you can't really notice that as much. So 3000 divided by 10 equals 300. 300 divided by 10 equals 30. And 30 divided by 10 equals 3. So the digits move to the right. Now, let's go back over that. If we multiply by 10, the digits move to the left. If we divide by 10, they move to the right. It doesn't just work for those numbers either. We can use a larger number or mixed numbers like this one. If we have 285 and we want to multiply that by 10, each of the digits moves one place to the left. And then we put a zero at the end. That's the zero placeholder. And the zero at the end tells us we've multiplied by 10. Two hundreds move to the thousands place. The eight tens move to the hundreds and the five units moves to the tens place. And then we have the zero placeholder. So 285 times 10 is 2,850. Now it works for division as well. This time we've got 43,000. And remember, if we divide by 10, we move the digits to the right. So four is now thousands, three is now hundreds, and we've got zeros there. And we don't need to worry about that last zero. You'll look at that when we look at decimals. 